Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hanlon, aka The Laptop Legend, and today I had a really nice bounce back day for my first red day after 158 green days yesterday. Today I made like 5,500, and the main reason for that was AABB. I called out this breaking news as soon as it came out midday, and uh, it ended up running well over 50% 50, 50 from the call out. Um, but in this video today, I don't really want to talk about uh, you know the stocks for tomorrow. Mainly I'm just making this as a resource for you guys so that you can practice watching level two because uh, I just want to explain you know something that was going on uh, within the stock and just show you guys the replay because I got this part uh, on recording so I just want to show you guys and uh, you know if you watch this stuff it will make you a better trader overall so uh, that's just that's the point of this so yeah that's that's pretty much it for this intro I want to make it really straight and straightforward to the point so let's uh, let's just get into it here unfortunately I missed the rip at the beginning because I recorded like the first 30 minutes of the day and then I cut off for like an hour and a half. So I missed pretty much the biggest rip of ABB, uh, which is unfortunate. I didn't notice my recording and turned off. But anyways, I got 25 minutes worth here. And what I want to show you is uh, you can see right here, AABB, uh, you know, this is kind of the middle of the day here. I'm already up a good amount on the day. You can see this is my Schwab. Um, this is right here. This is my Cobra account. And then this is what I've realized today in my TD Ameritrade account with DAS. So this is for TD right here. And um, you can see I'm currently long like 43,000 shares. And right now, ABB is stuck in this, like, it's just going sideways, man. Like, it's one of the weirdest things. It occasionally happens on OTC stocks where it will get stuck uh, with one market maker that has a reserve at one price and one market maker that has a reserve right below that. And there's literally just one, one, one hundredth of a penny difference between them that's the spread and it just goes sideways until one of them breaks and uh, it, it looks really funny on the chart and you guys can see that uh right there it looks really weird um for those of you guys who don't know what a reserve order is it's basically when you have more size than what you're showing so you can see here on the level two uh it says that this dude is selling ten thousand shares gtsm uh but he's not he's not at all this dude is not selling ten thousand shares and you can see by what's printing. Um, I mean, it's, it's gone sideways for a while, but this dude has sold, uh, I don't even know how many millions of shares at this price, all claiming to sell 10,000 shares. Uh, so, I mean, he, he could have a, a 10 million share sell order. Who knows, man? Uh, but he did manage to get some nice shares off there. And then there's the same thing on the bid. You know, there's a reserve buyer on the bid there. So it literally is just, it's just going sideways. And uh, at this point, you know, I'm, I'm currently long, 43,551 shares. I was long, uh, I think like 100,000 from right down there on that bid support. I think I had like a 19.8 average. I was buying on these dips here because it was consolidating really nicely. And uh, I did sell, I think like 41,000 at 2049 up here. So I pretty much top ticked that because um, I saw that it was probably gonna pull back a little bit. So I like to sell some into strength. And uh, you know, then it just started going sideways. So I still have these shares. And uh, I do end up buying some more here because I think, you know, when it's going sideways like this and it's still holding well above VWAP on the day, to me that's a pretty bullish sign, at least until it picks a direction one way or another. So if this thing breaks up and out of this consolidation, typically it's pretty explosive. If it breaks down, typically it's, uh, it's pretty scary and there's a pretty big dump. Now, hindsight is 2020 on this one, obviously. I was a little bit more bullish. I was a little bit more uh, long biased, which is kind of unfortunate because uh, it didn't, I wasn't able to take advantage of what is about to happen on the short side because I was so, I guess, long focused. So, you know, I thought, okay, if this breaks up to the up upside, it's, it's probably gonna rip. And if it breaks down, then it's probably just gonna break down and, uh, you know, chop around, maybe bounce around in here. So I didn't really take the short seriously uh, because I, I could have shorted probably at like 20 or something like that um, after selling my longs. So you'll see here in a second. Yeah, so I am up to uh, up to 100,000 shares now that upped my average from 19.8 to, uh, to 20.07. That's my average here. So I'm still technically up unrealized, you know, $198 on this. Um, I did look at BKKT for a second here, uh, but then I quickly go back to ABB just because there's nothing going on there. Let me skip through this a little bit. Yeah, so basically what I wanna talk about is I'm just watching this level two and watching the time and sales and that, you know, it gives me a, a big advantage over people who don't know how to read this stuff and I just wanna walk you guys through this. So, uh, you know, the way I have it set up 
is obviously, I guess it's, it's, it's the same thing as Schwab, and you might not know this. If you don't, green is where someone's buying on the ask. Red is when someone is selling on the bid. Yellow is when someone buys over the ask. Purple is when someone sells under the bid. So you can see we just printed 100,000 shares purple there. And uh, to me, when you, when you see a purple print after something's been stuck in a range, that is a really, really good sign that uh, support is about to break. Now, if something's in a panic and you know it's already gone down a lot and there's purple prints, Sometimes it's a little misleading because sometimes they print under the bid, there's people panic selling, but then they end up bouncing it anyway. But if you're going sideways in a, in a big support and uh, you know it's about to pick a direction and you see one of those prints one way or another, it is an extremely high indication rate of what is going to happen. So I see this purple print and I'm pretty damn confident that this thing is, uh, is probably gonna break down and it gets way worse very quickly. So just keep watching guys. Now we see three more prints go through. Well, I guess two more prints. You can see one of those is a 1.3 million print. A 1.3 million print. That's crazy, guys. I mean, that, that is a huge purple print. That is a very bearish sign. You can see this thing's already starting to break down. And I'm already at all of my shares. I was long 100,000, which means that for every tenth of a penny, I lose 100 bucks. And I'm already at all of my shares. And again, let me just replay that so you guys can see one more time, right? So I actually probably should have had this at 50,000, so I would have been you know, ready even faster. That would have been the, the smart thing to do. And I'm also ready to, to, to short this if it breaks down. I just end up not doing that for whatever reason. Um, but again, let's just go through this one more time so you guys can see. I mean, it's really crazy how fast it happens. And I stopped the, the panic early. But again, you gotta be on your toes with this stuff. Purple print, I immediately change it to 50,000. We get another purple print and I immediately go market and I sell and I sell them both. Now, again, I actually did get lucky there because that 50K right there, that's me at 20, 26, and then I got 50K of those 123,000. So luckily, TD Ameritrade had really good fills today on ABB for the most part, and that allowed me to get out immediately and not get caught in this panic that ensues. So look how quickly, once that breaks down, look how quickly this thing panics. And again, I could have shorted here and gotten filled probably like 20 or something. This is real time, this is not sped up at all. The bids just absolutely disappear. I mean, look at that, look at that. We're already at 19.6. I mean, if I shorted, you know, 100K shares at 20.1 or something, that would already be 500 bucks profit. We're at 19.42. I mean, that, that happens so insanely fast. I mean, we're down a whole penny. We're literally, we're down a whole penny. We're literally down a whole penny in like a minute, if even that. So, I mean, they just pull those bids, they're just gone. Now, it does end up chopping around here a little bit, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure if this thing wants to bounce. I did miss the fill there at 19.2, because, you know, sometimes these panics, they go a lot lower than you think, and I, I would rather just wait to get shares than, you know, buy too early and then be, and then be cutting. Uh, so, in this case, I did miss that mini bounce. I could have scalped by it, like 19.2, sell 19.4 there. Um, but I did end up missing that, but... Uh, if you guys want to go replay that level two just to see what happened there, I just I think it's very fascinating how that works. Like it'll literally just go sideways, and then as soon as it breaks, boom, it's just it's just game over. So pretty wild on that. And uh, you know, same thing kind of happens here. Now OWUV, this does start going. You can see ABB's bouncing around a little bit. Again, I saw OWUV early. I did call this out in the Discord. Um, you know, just that it's running, but I I didn't take a position here. I should have chased, but you never know how far stuff is going to run. So. It's hindsight's always 2020, I guess. This thing ends up running pretty far too. Um, but I just want to show you guys what happens with ABB a little bit later on. Um, you can see OWUV still strong. It's over 20, man. Pretty crazy. I get stuck with some shares. I do end up changing my order quantity on OWUV there. You can see I got I got stuck with 20,000 shares from 1989. It happened on a pending cancel, which kind of stinks. Uh, but then I ended up selling, I think at like 20 and then getting out for break even right before they end up ripping it even higher, I think. Um, but I want to show you this AABB right here. Because ABB is kind of wedging here. <clears throat> now that I type this in, and uh, you can see I just placed a buy order, and I just want to explain why. So, you know, I really like buying on wedges when things get really tight, because for me, 
this is really, really good risk reward when I look at a level two and I see this. Now, granted, they could pull the bids pretty quickly, um, but when I see this, you know, what I see is, I see that it's very, very tight. If I'm buying on the ask, the bid, this bid, I don't know if it's reserve or not, this bid is only two one hundredths of a, of a, you know, of a cent away, and this one is only four one hundredths of a cent away. And if I buy 50,000 shares, chances are I can probably sell those to this dude at 1945. So if I'm wrong, I get out at like 1945, uh, you know, maybe maybe they pull them too quickly, I get out at 19.3, maybe 19.1. That's probably worst case scenario based on how quick I am and how good the fills have been today. And uh, best case scenario, you know, this thing breaks back up and, uh, you know, I can sell over 20 or maybe it breaks out and goes even higher and breaks high a day. You know, who knows? I probably wouldn't hold it that long. But that's why I ended up buying here. You can see again, I do get filled, uh, I think, all right, well, actually, this fill was not instant 50K at once. Uh, you can see I filled 12,200 there. You can see I filled the rest. Also, yeah, I mean, my prints, they are on the on the time and sales. You guys could see that show up in my account. I just want to go back and do that one more time. Just in case, you know, I think there's some people out there who do think I'm, I'm faking the trades that I make. Again, I mean, you can see there's a real account. It's not a demo account. Again, 12,000, 12,000, and then I get the rest of my shares right here. Now I'm up to 50,000, so I, I do just wanna clarify that. Uh, but the level do look pretty decent right here. But uh, just in case I have to sell, you know, I do get that market ready. And again, I'm just watching the time and sales and I'm watching the level two and seeing if this is gonna do what I want it to do. Cause it also, they could pull it more and it could dump a lot more. So I'm ready for that. Now we just lost a bidder there. That's a very bad sign. But it still looks all right. I mean, this is what it looked like when I bought. Now, we do get a bunch of sellers here. I mean, someone just dumped a lot of shares, several hundred thousand shares. What is that, like three or 400, 400 something thousand shares here on the Citadel Reserve buyer, which means that that's probably gonna pull. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean for sure that it's gonna pull, but I don't like to see this many sellers when I'm long. So my finger, you can see, I'm literally hovering right over the sell button. I mean, this is a lot of selling, man. This is not what I wanna be seeing after I enter a position. Now the bid is still holding strong, so they could bounce it here. So I haven't sold yet, but I mean, wow. Again, each one of those, you know, that, that adds up quickly, Russ. Another 75,000 shares sold. They're eating a lot of shares, but they can only eat so many. I'm ready to sell. Another 25, I mean, it's just crazy. I don't know who's, who's doing it, why they're doing it in 25K lots instead of just selling all at once. Maybe they get better fills like that, I don't know. I'm also kind of ready to short here. And again, I'm just watching this, guys. I'm just watching this. What is gonna happen? I am glued to the time and sales, glued to the level two. Still a lot of selling here. Not much buying of any size. And we just got the down tick there. We just got the down tick. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. So I, I do wanna replay that real quickly, just so you can see. This Citadel bidder was at 1947, and the seller was at 1948. And we got the down tick. We got the down tick, which means that, you know, the buyer moved down and the seller moved down. And I questioned myself a little bit there. I was like, did, did they actually move down or was it that's what it was all along? And I see this purple print right there, and I just know this thing is about to dump. So you can see I immediately hit the sell and luckily I get insta-filled again. So I'm out as soon as I see that purple print because I know it's about to dump. My mistake here was not immediately shorting right away. If I had shorted right away, it would have been amazing. Instead, I wait to short. I don't know what I'm waiting for. You know, I, I wait to short there and it fills me like no shares at all. Like literally just the worst fills ever. You can see fills are really bad on Schwab. So I'm trying to short 50,000, they gave me 500. I'm trying to short more another 25,000. So I have a total of 75,000 sitting and I've filled 500 so far, nothing. Tons of purple prints. I know it's about to break 19 here. I know it's about to dump. I can't fill anything short, literally nothing. I was trying to short from like 19.3. There's a 250K bidder there. I can't get anything. I'm deciding if I want to short more but I end up canceling that. Cause I'm like, why am I still not filled? That's a bad sign. It could bounce here.
Now, I'm filled 50,000. And I think that's all I end up getting filled. I think I canceled my 20 other 25,000 order that I placed. But you can see, like now at this point, I'm, I'm kind of second guessing myself. Cause like, yeah, it did dump nicely. And there you go, you know, I get a, a little bit of a dump. But it's not kind of, it's not as aggressive as this one. And it's, it's not exactly what I was looking for. Now we did get a, a nice 400,000 seller there. So that is nice. I like to see that. Um, and I think I end up covering this. But it's like annoying, you know, it ends up, it ends up, uh, I think I try to cover. Yeah, I end up covering the rest here, so I do pay several commissions for that. And then what happens, you know, they end up dumping it a whole lot lower after that. You know, I end up covering uh, way too soon on that. But it is what it is, I end up shorting. I get filled into weakness with a horrible fill, and I end up covering the strength again. It's just kind of, it's kind of sad, you know, given how hard this dumped. So really, if I just shorted on the break of that, man, it would have been incredible. And, uh, you know, actually, I think pretty much most of this money today did come from shorting ABB. Um, I left a lot on the table. I paid probably, overall today, I paid like 2,500 commissions for like 5,500 total profit. So it would have been like an 8K day if not for commissions. But, uh, yeah, you know, you live, you learn. Overall, I'm, uh, I'm pleased with today. I definitely could have traded ABB better. But uh, you live and you learn, man. So hopefully you found this, this video helpful, guys. Level two, I mean, this is just so key. If you can learn, if you can learn this stuff, you will be leagues ahead of everyone else uh, who doesn't know how this stuff works. There was also one other thing I was talking about um, today in the Discord live. I can't remember exactly what it was um, in terms of level two, but you know, if you're listening in every day and you're watching the price action live and you got level two pulled up, you will learn a lot of things that are gonna help you be able to predict where the stuff is going a lot better. So I, uh, I just wanna see you guys so you guys grow with me. That's the goal, man. Let's let's grow better together. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.